Okay, we're back in chapter four. So let's see what happens from here on out. The morning that greets me is gray. It's as though a dark filter has been placed over my eyes, leaving the world wanting for color. I blink over and over again, but nothing changes. I let out a sigh, lamenting the weight of it all. I figured I would feel better after sleeping through the night, but I just feel even heavier now. I don't think Usagi is lying, but if she's not, that would mean this place really is in between the worlds of life and death and that we're partially dead. <laughs> right now, though, there's something I'm even more worried about than Usagi. We have no idea what happened to Yamato after he turned into that terrifying beast. Where could he have gone? Yamato. I sweep my eyes across the room. Everyone is seated in their favorite spots, and each of them has a dejected shadow darkening their sallow faces. At times like this, we have to support one another. Hey, what do you guys want for breakfast? Anything you'd like to eat? I'll make whatever you want. Oh, how about pancakes? I just made some jam the other day. Ugh. The silence is deafening. I try to keep my voice bright and cheerful, but everyone else is as motionless as a statue. Oh, my bad. I'll pass. I'm not super hungry right now. Karasaba responds to me, his reluctance evident. Oh, okay. I understand. You just woke up and all. What about you, Hakage? No. I don't think I can get anything down right now. I'm going to go back to my room. I've got some things to think about. Oh. Hikage doesn't even look at me as he leaves. I guess he can't help it. I'm not very hungry either. And even if I were, I don't really feel like eating. We also ate rather late last night as well. I'll have some fruit later. That basket that came in looked like it had some nice juicy oranges in it. Yeah, I guess it'd be good to keep it light. I smile vaguely at Kagiha's attempt to comfort me. Yamato's disappearance. It's not just an empty space among us. It's as though the delicate balance we'd managed to build up is steadily collapsing without him. We were so close to coming together as a group, but now it seems like we're going to fall to pieces. And I'm more afraid of that than anything else. Loss creates a chain reaction. With Yamato's disappearance, our willpower is crushed and the bonds between us have weakened. What might we lose next? If yet another cruel truth is thrust upon us, we just might fall apart entirely. My worries continue to pile up faster and faster. Several days have passed. Our lives continue on the same as they were before. We collect shards, return them to the kaleidoscope, and then strike out in the manor once again. Over and over we repeat this cycle, and the light from the kaleidoscope becomes ever more radiant. I'm starting to feel as though we're getting close to finishing it. However, rather than relief, our hearts feel more and more weighed down. And the reason is obvious. Watch out, Benny Yuri! Yikes! The monster's razor sharp claws just barely miss my eyes. I'm only so fortunate because somebody pulled me away at the last second. I scramble back to my feet, trying to center myself once more. Are you alright? Are you hurt? N no! I mean, yes! I'm fine! You need to focus! This is a life or death situation! I'm sorry! Thank you for saving me. Ah! The monster rears back and roars, its entire body shaking with the force of it. The massive beast refixes its gaze on us and comes charging in our direction. Let's go! Got it! Okay. I'm sorry, Kagiha, I ain't simping for you. It ain't gonna happen, which probably means I'm gonna fail my butterfly test. But it's fine. 
I mean, you did get me crying before. So, I mean, there was some small simpage going on there, I, I guess, in a certain point of view. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is, I'm probably not going to do well on this. Am I trying to jinx myself so that I do do well? Possibly. But it doesn't really matter. I don't know why I even care about this anymore, but I do. Because my skills are being called into question and I'm failing miserably. Come on. Well, you can't accuse me of being good at this. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. I definitely don't want to miss the kaleidoscope. Butterflies, because they're very shiny and important. Probably. Come on. Now you space out. It's so funny how sometimes they're just like 50 in your face, or they're all over the place. In your face. Come on. Lock on. We're near the end. Lock on. <laughs> Got him right at the end. <laughs> you know, I never actually looked at what Yamato's little thingy was. Oh, hey! Telling myself I suck continues to work. Nice. I'll take it. As the last shot tears through the monster, it lets loose a final roar and hurls itself to the ground. It twitches and squirms, but the movement soon stops. Smoke rises from its body as it melts away into a kaleidoscope of black butterflies. Phew. In the next moment, the innumerable mass of butterflies are absorbed into my hairpin and the ring on Kagiha's finger. A forked river of black butterflies. Looking on as though dazed, I start to feel fatigued, almost as though in proportion to the number of butterflies sucked up into my hairpin. I feel so out of breath. My body feels suffocatingly hot, and yet I'm not sweating. I can't... I can't really breathe. Benny Yuri, are you alright? Oh, yeah. I'm fine. What about you? Not nearly as exhausted as you. You always get this way after a fight. Yeah. It's not so bad during the fight itself, but once the butterflies get absorbed into my hairpin, it really flares up. I get really tired all of a sudden. I wonder what's up with these butterflies, and why they get sucked up into the accessories we're wearing. I'm not certain. There are still many things we don't know. Usagi said that they aren't actually butterflies, but that they're like the particles that make up souls, and that the black ones will take us to the abyss. Maybe it's a bad idea for me to accumulate so many. <laughs> I take off my hairpin and place it in my hand. It looks darker and cloudier than before. You've been rather out of sorts lately. I'm worried you'll vanish the instant I take my eyes off of you. I'm sorry to make you worry. Is something wrong? People who've lost all hope turn into those monsters. Knowing that they used to be human makes me hesitate. Yes. I understand how you feel. But we can't come back to life without gathering the shards. Still, I can't shake this feeling that easily. I mean, among those monsters, he might... <laughs> Yamato could be among them. I can't bring myself to say his name out loud. I'm afraid that saying it will make it a reality. It's nearly night time. Shall we head back? Yeah. Kagiha gives me a reassuring smile and turns to make his way back towards our hideout. Just as I go to follow behind him... Huh? Out of the corner of my eye, I catch a flicker of something white. It's my visitor from a few nights ago. Reflexively, I snap my head up to look at the second floor. Whatever it was seems to have vanished. A silhouette? 
Was that Usagi? I follow after Kagiha, thoughts of that white shape lingering in my mind. So Manchero should come for us to lead us out in the night. Later in the evening, I find myself gazing at the kaleidoscope lost in my thoughts. I can't stop thinking about Yamato. Where is he? And what could he be doing right now? I wonder if Usagi knows where he is. The scene replays itself in my mind. Yamato, screaming wildly as his body twists and contorts into that horrible monster. His grotesque form, enveloped in a black haze, is utterly indescribable. I wonder what I'd do if I ever got to see him again. I'm not even sure he can still communicate. <sighs> I let out a heaving sigh. As I lift my head, I notice a clump of white butterflies gathering in front of the door. Huh? What are they doing? They're usually flying around the room. Do they want to go outside? I get up from my chair and walk towards the door. Thinking that they want to get out, I open the door. Oh! And out they go. Their wings fluttering, the butterflies float straight down the hallway. I've never seen this happen before. I wonder if there's something outside. <laughs> the white butterflies try to guide us, and the monsters won't go near them. So, maybe... It should be okay if I follow them just a little. As though drawn along by something unseen, I follow the phosphorescent glow of the butterflies. Where the heck are they headed? I probably shouldn't follow them too far. Fluttering left, right, up, down, back, and forth, the butterfly's motion seems unstable, but nonetheless, they advance onward without hesitation. Before I know it, we've arrived at the entrance hall. The butterflies start to float upward towards the high ceiling. They're going up? I can't follow them there. They continue to gain altitude as they bob along the slope of the central stairway. I let out a sudden gasp when I see where they finally come to a stop. <gasps> You're- Yo. The white butterflies completely engulf the form of a man standing at the landing of the stairs. The cloak wrapped around his slender frame flutters despite there being no trace of wind. His unkempt silvery hair shines brightly, like the Milky Way streaming through the night sky. You are the person we saw that first day. His appearance is so unorthodox I can't tear my eyes away. But thanks to the fox mask, I can't see his face at all. Come. What? He... awaits. His voice is muffled behind the mask. With an upward movement of his chin, he gestures for me to go upstairs. He wants me to follow him? Who are you? Do you remember saving us? Come. Yamato. Yamato? Without a response to any of my questions, I head up the stairs. What should I do? I don't even know where we're headed. I really shouldn't be following him. If Hakage found out, he'd be yelling about me having no sense of caution again. Still... Yamato could be up there. Wait! I'm coming! I call out to him, making up my mind and stepping onto the stairway. For our boy! Where are you taking me? You said he awaits, right? Were you talking about Yamato? He continues to walk in silence. Onward he walks without responding to any of my questions. Past one corner and another, we wind our way through the halls. He remains fixed on our destination, weaving through the corridors with total familiarity. This path is so complicated. I'm not sure I'll be able to remember it. Was it left twice, then right? And now another left. Right? Ugh. Am I going to be able to find my way back? Just as I'm beginning to feel uneasy, the man stops. He throws a glance back at me before knocking on the wall a few times. Aggressively. And... Whoa! 
What I had taken to be nothing more than a plain wall suddenly slides open, revealing a set small stone steps. A secret doorway? I had no idea. He is here. Huh? He is here. Alone. He's telling me to go. Okay, but... Just me? You're not coming? I... He hesitates for a moment before continuing. I... cannot. So, I'll wait here. You'll wait. I will guide you back. Worry not. You... remember his true form. He puts his back to the wall and falls silent, evidently having decided to say nothing further. Well... now what? Considering what he said, I'm not sure he'll just let me go back. And what was all that about his true form? I make up my mind to go. I step through the secret doorway and look up the stairs. They stretch on for a long way, and the area beyond is awash in pale light, as if sunlight is pouring down from above. It's too bright to be an attic, and it feels totally different from the other rooms in the manor. I wonder what lies ahead. It's one of my favorite scenes of the game coming up. Worry, curiosity, and a faint hope swirl within me. In the end, I decide to go up the stairs. Fear and hope whirling in my heart, I make my way up. It's interesting that uh, finding out about Hakage required going down the stairs into the basement. But getting closer to the Yamato involves going up into the attic. When I reach the top, a garden overflowing with blooming flowers stretches out before me. I hear the faint sound of flowing water. I'm struck by how odd it is to find a fantastical place like this here, inside the mansion sunken deep into darkness. It makes me feel like I've traveled over some great distance. Is this a greenhouse? It's so pretty. I never would have expected to find something like this here. The greenery is lustrous, the flowers full of life, and fluttering between it all are white butterflies. This is such a big place. Is there something further inside? I step off of the well-maintained cobblestone path and push my way through the overgrown grass. After walking for some time... Huh? What was that? I gaze in the direction of the pained growls. A black creature lies twitching on the ground. A monster! I cover my mouth to keep my scream from escaping and hold my breath. I thought they didn't go near the white butterflies! Do the man in the fox mask want me to see this monster? Goosebumps dimple my skin as I hold myself completely still, trying not to make a sound. I can't fight it by myself. I'd better run before it sees me. Hey, actually, waiting for the right moment to escape, I spy something familiar around the monster's neck. That choker? Isn't that Yamato's? Could it be? I lean forward slightly, trying to confirm my suspicion. Unlike the other monsters, this one seems to be oozing fear, and its body is curled up into a ball. It seems so human. It really must be him. Yamato? You are Yamato, aren't you? My legs move before I can think. I can't be mistaken. I move closer to the creature. When I do, it gives a jolt and turns its face in my direction. Yamato, do you remember me? It's me, Benny Yuri. The closer I get, the more he tries to scuttle away. I know it's you. I won't do anything to you. Please, don't be afraid. <laughs> when I take another step forward, he flails his arm like he's drowning underwater. The sharp claws on his huge hands slash through the plants around us. My blood runs cold thinking about what would have happened if they had been me. No. Come on, don't shake. Stay calm. I'm definitely afraid. 
But Yamato could be even more afraid than I am. I'll be okay. Tentatively, I reach out to him. He turns away and his head goes limp. There he is. D don't look! <laughs> don't look at me like this. Yamato! I'm not even human. I might hurt you. His voice is hoarse as he turns me away. It hurts to look at him, slouched like a frightened child. It's all right. You're talking to me right now. Just like you always do. Acting all brusque, but deep down, you're so kind. You haven't changed at all. Penny, Yuri. If you were going to attack me, you already would have. It's okay. You're still you, Yamato. <gasps> I wrap him up into a hug, soothing him, showing my affection, and as I do, memories of the time we spent together come rushing back one by one. His face, his hands, his laugh. One after the other, lost memories flood back into my mind. Over and over, I stroke my hand gently along his back. Suddenly, the choker around his neck emits a dazzling light. What is this? Suddenly. Ah, this picture is just so good! Ugh! Gets me in the feels every time. He hugs me back, squeezing tightly. Yamato! Your body! It's... <clears throat> his sinister-looking claws begin to fall off. The massive musculature on his body begins to shrink, and, as if being purified, his darkened skin returns to its original color. Yamato! He's back! Look at yourself! You're not a monster anymore! Your eyes, your nose, your mouth... You're the Yamato I know again! <laughs> Yamato? He wraps his hands around my back and squeezes me so tight that it hurts. Let me stay like this. Just a little longer. I'm afraid I'll turn back if I let go. Yamato. Please. The pain in his plea pierces my heart. The last time we saw each other, I tried to avoid him when he reached out to me. If I had faced him back then, he might never have ended up the way he did. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you, Yamato. I won't run anymore. I'll stay by your side, Yamato. Ah, so good. Ah, <laughs> I can't help it. I just love that part so much. We embrace one another so tightly that I feel as if our hearts themselves are curling up together. Time begins to slip by. Eventually, we reluctantly let go and face each other. What an amazing relief. He's really back to normal. He doesn't look like he's completely back to the way he was, but there's no denying that we're truly connected to one another. Are you okay? Does it hurt anywhere? Like your chest or anything? Do you feel sick? No, I'm fine. Just feels gross to have turned into that thing. So, it beats how you were before. <laughs> he smiles as if to tell me not to worry. I know it's a forced smile, but there's a part of me that can't get over how warm and familiar it feels. By the way, how'd you get all the way up here? I'm surprised you found that secret doorway. Dunno. After I turned into that monster, couldn't bear for anyone to see me, so I just kept running. Guess it was a coincidence, but I saw some white butterflies gathering around this random wall. When I tried to touch it, the secret door slid open. I see. I wonder if the butterflies were guiding you. What about you? How did you find this place? And in the middle of the night, no less. Something happened back at the hideout. No, not at all. 
I actually saw some white butterflies too. I followed them into the hallway and then... And then the man in the fox mask guided me here. The guy in a fox mask? Yeah. He saved me and Hakage before we met you. And it seemed like he knew who you were too. Never met him. Haven't come across anyone other than you and the guys in the hideout. Oh, really? Maybe he just knows who you are. Or... Could there be some other reason for it? What are you doing? Following shady-ass masked people around in the first place? He really didn't seem like a bad person. I don't really know how to explain it. I just had a feeling that he was safe. Kidnappers don't usually wear signs advertising it. I know that! Sheesh, you sound just like Hakage. That's right. The two of them are... You two are brothers, right? You and Hakage. He was really worried after you disappeared. Hakage, huh? He mutters like he's turning the name over in his head. How much of your memory did you get back? What? Uh, not much other than my family. Nothing about school or friends or anything? No, none of that. Gotcha. So, not yet. He inclines his head slightly with a ponderous expression on his face. With that, he falls silent. Is he thinking about Hakage? I'm sure it must be a shock to have someone who's been in a coma for ten years show up right in front of him. Should we go back to the hideout for now? The person wearing the fox mask said he'd guide us back. I stand, ready to lead him outside, but he gives no sign of moving. Yamato? Sorry, Benny-Yuri. Could you head back on your own? What? I've got some stuff to think about. My head's a damn mess. And... I don't want you to tell Hikage or the others that you saw me here. What? Why? Can't you think about things back in the hideout? No. You can't stay here alone, though. He flashes a toothy smile in response. Actually, this place is a lot less horrible than the manor itself. It's got flowers and butterflies flying around. A fountain, too. However the hell that works. I feel a lot more at ease in here. Maybe he's worried because his body isn't completely human again yet. Thinking about that, I can't really bring myself to pursue the matter any further. Okay, I'll come back later then. If you need anything, I'll bring it to you. I don't need much. Keep your chin up. I'm glad I got to see you. And thanks again. He motions me out and I start to leave the greenhouse. I turn my head to look at him, reluctant to part ways, but he watches as I disappear down the stairs. Are you finished? When I reach the bottom, the man is waiting there as promised. Yes, for today, but I'd like to come back soon. Understood. I will guide you when the time comes. The man nods and starts walking. As I follow behind, I realize that I feel a strange sense of affinity for him. I know nothing about him, but I don't feel afraid at all. Actually, I feel like I can let my guard down when he's around. Maybe it's because he took me to Yamato, but I just can't bring myself to see him as someone bad. Who are you? How did you know where Yamato was? So many questions burn in my mind, but I doubt I'll get answers even if I were to ask. So, thank you for bringing me to Yamato. Hmm. I offer him my gratitude. As usual, he doesn't reply. Still, I sense the slightest softening in his demeanor. Okay, I think we can skip this part. He's gonna take us to go see Yamato tomorrow. Ooh. I 
stare off in the direction he disappeared and wonder. Okay. Well, this wasn't a choice before, so this is probably the moment. Um, I'm gonna make a save here, actually. Let's see. Right there. Great. And I just realized I never actually explained this when we started this route, but going forward, as of now, Yamato, Manchero, and Karasba have two endings each. And I'm going to classify it as, like, the Psychedelica ending and the real world ending, because the endings are named after their names, whether they're in Psychedelica or in the real world. So, for instance, Yamato has a Yamato end, and a Takuya end. And you can't get the Takuya end without the Yamato end. So I don't know if the Yamato end... Considering it's called Yamato end, I'm assuming we're gonna stay in Psychedelica. That may be a bad ending, or the best, a normal ending. So, all I'm saying is prepare your hearts. <laughs> um, so for... The Yamato ending, I need to not pry, because this is important to who Takia is. So I'm gonna say I probably shouldn't pry. And then after this scene ends, I think I'm gonna go into the flowchart and do the last three short stories. That's my plan. I shouldn't be too nosy. He won't answer me because he doesn't want to talk. I'll wait until he opens up himself. Might wait a while. I open the door with a creak. Then step forward into the quiet room, relieved that no one else seems to be awake. It's nearly morning. I stayed a little too long. I was worried somebody might already be awake. I'm glad nobody saw me. <laughs> Yamato asked me to keep his presence a secret. He probably doesn't want the others to see him in that monstrous form. Or, perhaps there was another reason. Either way, it'd be easier to respect his wishes if I didn't come across any of the others. I prepare several excuses, just in case somebody asks me what I'm doing awake so late. I'd like to avoid lying, if possible. Lies create doubt, and doubt creates rifts. It leads to the dark side. The relationship between us is awkward enough as is. I don't want to make it worse. The person in the fox mask said he'd come for me tomorrow. I wonder if I can sneak out again. Karasba tends to stay up late, though. Hmm. I plan my next move as I head back towards my room. Okay. End scene. And with that, let's go into our flowchart and start working on these. Ooh, there we go. Yamato root confirmed. Okay, so we can start there next time. That's good. But first, we're gonna go here and we're going to unlock that. Let's do some bathing. Yeah, okay. This'll be fine. My heart, lost in the bottom of a deep pool, finally breathes new life. With a lack of good news recently, I have to force myself to wake up every day. Now that the dust has settled, I finally realize something. Yamato's departure shook me more than I expected. You never know how important something is until you lose it. And we always lose things. Yeah, unfortunately. I walk down the hallway with Monshiro in the dead of night. With the sound of the rain in the distance, I turn to look behind myself several times. Luckily, there are no monsters. Thank you for walking with me today again, Monshiro. He says nothing, but I know he has accepted my thanks. Monshiro is taciturn, but he doesn't feel scary. We arrive at the greenhouse. I've started coming here on a daily basis. I wonder how Yamato is doing. I bid farewell to Manchiro as he stands at the entrance to the greenhouse. I then enter the verdant space. Hello. I'm here for the bathing. Yamato? I call out to him when I enter, but I get no reply. I look in his usual spot, but I don't see him there. 
Did he go out somewhere? He should have known I was coming, though. Yamato? Where are you? I suddenly feel very alone. The greenhouse isn't necessarily safe. What should I do? I hear the sounds of water. Not the pitter-patter of rain, but a light splash. There's a water canal here. The beautiful artificial flow surrounds the fountain in the middle. I stare at the water without much thought. Hey! Hey! <laughs> that is a, um, pretty nice picture that is not going to become my desktop background. Definitely not. I would never tell a lie. Sometimes. <clears throat> Looking good, though, man. Keeping fit. It's good. Glad. Good to see. Mm -hmm. Benny Yuri? I'm sorry. Huh? What's the matter? I think I accidentally peeked on you. No, I was just bathing. He says it matter-of-factly, brushing his wet hair with one of his hands. He's actually... doesn't... I guess the butterflies can't really stay on him while he's bathing, now that I think about it. Water droplets are scattered over his well-trained body. His upper torso is completely naked. Now, is that tattoo a Psychedelica-only thing, or does that exist in the real world? Because just saying I'm a fan. I guess he doesn't seem to mind. Would it be strange if I suddenly turned away? Man, I feel way better. Act normal! Don't take it too seriously! Um, is the water cold? Of course it is. Oh, uh, right. He quickly follows up as if throwing his words at me. I don't usually do this. But I just needed to gather my thoughts. Oh, I see. Hmm. Oh, shoot. Maybe I was too self-conscious and ended up asking something weird. But he's naked right now! Naked! What's wrong? You're acting weird today. Really? I don't think so. You're feeling sick. He looks at my face, checking my complexion. That only seems to make things worse, though. I'm okay! Really, I'm totally fine! You're breaking out in a cold sweat, aren't you? You look kind of pale, too. Oh! Huh? If I get near you now, I'll get you wet. Let me dry myself off real quick. Um, sure. I guess men don't really mind having their upper bodies exposed. But when I take a glimpse over at him again, my heart leaps into my throat. He's a lot more muscular than the average person. It's making me keenly aware that he's a man. Whee! Yeah. Mm hmm. Alright, good. Not that that's covering up much, honestly, when he puts the jacket on, but I guess it's something. Sorry for the holdup. Hey, what are you looking at? Uh, nothing. I made some sandwiches. Would you like some? Yeah. Thanks for always doing this. It's okay. All I did was chop a few of the ingredients. <laughs> no. I mean, thanks for coming here all the time. He smiled. I thought he'd be more down, what with looking the way he does now, but maybe he's feeling better now. It's alright. Manshiro always walks me, so there's no danger at all. I feel a lot better when I can come visit here, too. That guy, huh? That's good. Yeah, and... I'm really glad to see you're doing alright, Yamato. I'm totally fine. There's a lot to think about, but it's not that I can't stay calm. It's a pretty weird feeling. If you ever want to talk, I'm always here for you. Tell me whatever you want. I'll bring you food, too. 
I always just thought you were a busybody who was going to drag us all down. Guess I need to rethink that. You might be right, but hearing it so bluntly kind of makes me feel bad. I said I had to rethink. Don't let it get you down. You're still nosy, but you're tougher and more shrewd than you look. Shrewd? It's a compliment. You took the initiative to come all the way here. And you're brave enough to not be afraid of how I look. You're not frightening, Yamato. I think the average person might disagree. Who you are on the inside is still the same. And I know this might be a shock to you, but... But what? You're easier to talk to than you were before. <laughs> Well, thanks. He laughs and raises his hand. The action makes it seem like we're good friends, giving me all the more reason to feel relieved. I think you're easier to talk to now, too. But that's not because of you. It was me. What do you mean? When I was back at the hideout, I felt impatient for no reason, and I didn't trust anybody. I realize now that that was abnormal. I was treating you coldly, too. I'm sorry about that. It wasn't your fault, Yamato. We're all in a pretty difficult situation. It's in the past now, so all I can do is apologize. He looks down at his feet as I say it. His demeanor is so different now, and it makes him seem like an all-new person. I'm happy knowing that wasn't how you normally are. You're a real optimist. That's why you're so strong. But I really do feel happy about this. Having someone I can talk to about my feelings is reassuring. Being on edge about everything and thinking that anyone could be your enemy? It just hurts. Yeah. Our conversation stops right there, and all I can hear now is the sound of the water. But the silence isn't the awkward kind. It's the kind that comes into being because our hearts have connected. He thanked me for coming here, but I should be the one thanking him. Here, we can enjoy the silence. Don't overdo it, though. Even if you've got Monshiro with you, it's still not 100% safe. I know. Thanks for being concerned about me. Concerned? Yeah, I guess so. I'm not used to this. Oh, really? I think worrying about someone makes you kind. You dummy! That's not what I meant! Don't misunderstand me! What? I don't think I'm misunderstanding at all. You take things in a positive way too much. Don't say weird stuff like that. You're so... He's so shy right now. <laughs> I won't tell him that, though. Well, while we're on the subject, can I ask you something? What is it? Do you train? Not particularly. Uh, I guess that question was a little much. I was wondering what you were going to ask. Aha, uh -huh. so that's why you were looking at me so weird when I had my shirt off. That's not what I was trying to- I'll be more careful next time. Some people don't like looking at naked bodies. <laughs> I guess we should just leave it at that. Yep, good. We did it. <laughs> Let's uh, let him think that. Over the course of the evening, we talk widely. Idle chit-chat, our thoughts about the future and more. I had no idea being able to just relax and talk like this could be so calming. Despite his monstrous appearance, laughing together with him makes my heart race. We continue chatting through the night as I try to turn my eyes away from that feeling. Run towards it, girl. Run towards it.